Do you remember the game of hunt the thimble? You hide a thimble somewhere, and as the person searching for it gets closer to where the thimble is, everyone shouts either warmer or hot, or close to it, it's cooler or cold. So it is with Christmas. As we get closer and closer to Christmas, we're getting warmer and warmer, even hotter, as we get pulled into the media magic of shopping and gifts and food. It seems almost perfect, this mystic spell of Christmas, and yet for so many in our community this year, especially, Christmas will be a cold, difficult time, a struggle to provide, a sense of hopelessness and despair as the colour and celebration of the festival season slips further away from their grasp. For Christmas has become a symbol, not just a religious holiday. It should be a reflection of the way God really wants his world to be, full of peace, his harmony, his generosity and his love. But as we are all aware, sadly, it doesn't always feel like that for everyone. And so we pray for the people of this borough at this Christmas tide. Jesus, light of the world, as we come near to the time when we celebrate your birth, may we begin to see the world in the light of the understanding that you give us. As you chose the lowly, the outcasts and the poor to receive the great news of your birth, may we also remember those less fortunate than ourselves in this season of giving. We remember those who will be hungry and struggling to feed their families this year. Those for whom the giving and receiving of gifts is a distant dream. Those who will be finding ways to keep warm in their homes those who will feel isolated and alone, those who are concerned about money and what the future holds. We give thanks for the voluntary and statutory groups that will be working so hard to support others over this Christmas season. We ask for your blessing on the work that they do, and we give you thanks that they are so well supported by the ordinary folk throughout the borough who donate money, food, and other necessities. In a world where worry, not peace, prevails, help us to hear again that good news of Christmas and make it real in our hearts. Never have we needed your joy and peace more than now for the life we share in this borough, for the friendships which support us, for the great diversity of people and races who are making their home here and enriching our community, for those who work in all the essential services, for those who create employment, for the children, for families, and for our faith communities, Lord, we thank you. Lord of all endeavours, give to our civic leaders courage to follow noble aspirations, strength to support worthy causes, integrity to seek the truth, and in all their civic duties, be their inspiration and their guide. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. We remember Janet Evans, a deputy lieutenant who died recently. May she rest in peace. And if you feel able to, please join me in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those that trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Are there any further apologies for absence? Councillor Ryan. Sam Gosling, and he has this message you'd like me to read. No need to read a lesson, thank you. He says, I would like to announce with immediate effect my resignation from the Labour Group oh. and the Labour Party and will be finishing my term as an independent councillor. Over the last four and a half years as a member of the Labour Group, I have been persistently bullied and treated in a way Excuse me, Councillor, do you mind sitting down? On my mental it is health. not up to you to make a statement on behalf of any... So, on to the mayoral announcements. It is with great sadness that I have to inform you of the recent death of older woman Margaret Downs who many of you here this evening will have known very well. A former councillor, Margaret, has made an honorary alderman of the borough in 2017. She represented Denton South and was first elected to Thameside Council in 1992. Margaret was the civic mayor of Thameside during 2003 and 2004. Margaret was a well-known and highly regarded campaigning community councillor. She will be greatly missed, and I know you will all join me in extended sympathy to her family. On another sad note, on Friday, I attended the funeral of Janet Evans, Deputy Lieutenant of Greater Manchester, who died suddenly. Janet was a dedicated servant, not only in her ceremonial role, but also in her youth work, and especially with the Royal Navy Reserve and the Navy Cadets, where she held the title of Commander. She will be greatly missed, and I express the borough's sympathies to her husband, Mark, and the family. I would now ask you to stand and observe a minute's silence in memory, in memory of both Margaret and Janet. Okay, thank you. On a brighter note, it's been a great pleasure to get into the Christmas swing by attending pantomimes, community parties and light switch-ons. I think everyone who attended the Northern Lights Lantern Parade through Ashton will agree it was a spectacular event. Thousands of people lined the streets and I would like to congratulate our arts, events and culture teams who did such a splendid job in organising it. In November, it was an immense honour to represent the borough at Remembrous Ceremonies across the borough, including in my hometown of Ashton, where I attended the service at the parish church and then laid a wreath at the nearby war memorial. As you would expect, I have had a busy schedule since last meeting, and one which has included Diwali, our foster care celebration event, Thameside Beer Festival and the amazing Ashton Awards. Helping children is one of the parts of the mayorality I particularly enjoy, and it has given me great pleasure to take part in junior mayor assemblies at Oasis Academy, Hyde and Stiller Ridge Infants and <coughs> Infants in Stiller Ridge, and to welcome two ten year old Buckton Vale primary pupils into the parlour, Maisie Kelly and Isla Thornley, 
who completed a 10-mile walk to raise £330 for the Barrel Babe charity. I have also organised a competition to design the mayoral Christmas cards. Many children took part and there were some super entries. The winner was Sophia from Godley Primary in Hyde, who submitted a very colourful and festive design, which I will be happy to show you. In conclusion, I would like to thank the Mayoress Anne for her support, and also the Deputy Mayor, Councillor Tafin Sharif. And with that, it only remains for me to wish you all a very Merry Christmas and to extend the hope that the new year 2023 will be a better one for the residents of Tameside, whom we are also proud to represent. Thank you. I now hand over the, to the Chair of the Council of Business, Councillor George. Members of the Opposition, please stand and Thank you. Be seated. We'll move on now to uh, agenda item two, the council minutes. The laws moved. Can you second it. All in favour that sign the minutes. Thank you. Agenda item three, declarations of interest. Is there any? No. Move on to agenda item four. Communication announcements, uh, Councillor Cooney. The Christmas approaching, we gather for our final council meeting this year. The Christmas events across the borough this year have been truly amazing. They have seemed to get better and better each year. They are a real testament to what community means, people coming together to plan them, deliver them, and most importantly, enjoy them. And well done to all, and thank you to all those involved. Whilst we look forward to Christmas and enjoying the festivities, it is always tinged with the concerns for the most vulnerable of our, our community. More so this year due to the cost of living crisis that will impact on so many this winter. The Council continues to run the warm welcome hubs, helping hand service and community outre outreach events. I urge everyone within and without this room to do whatever they can to help those in need in their local community this Christmas and throughout the winter. In particular, I would ask them, ask fellow members and officers to support Councillor Fairfowl's call to support gifts and toys for our cared for children and care leavers. Previously, we've been short of gifts for boys aged eight to 25. This year, we have an Amazon, list, uh, Amazon wish list with a focus on teenagers and young adults, which you can use to make a purchase and have it delivered or as a guide, as a guiding hand to help you choose a gift. I know we have always been asked to donate, but I would be especially grateful if you could give this ask your consideration. We look back on 2022. When we look back on 2022, we can be proud of what we've achieved as a council and a community. I want to mention the few highlights. Staley Bridge Year of Culture has been a fantastic success. So many enriching events and activities that have showcased local talent and cultural inspirations. Securing 1.6 million from the DFE, which we will match fund, enables us to build a new state-of-the-art home for cared for children with disabilities. Ashton and High Town Centre renewal projects are moving ahead at pace with ideas and options out for the public to comment on. <clears throat> Same side, which is entrusted to manage Thirty billion, the £30 billion pension fund, an important responsibility which the team do with dedication and great skills. Last week won the Investment Pension Pensions Europe 2022 UK Pension Fund of the Year Award and were also shortlisted for the Public Sector Pension Fund Award. 2023 we will, will be a very challenging year, both for the Council and our community. 
In February, the Council will need to set a legal and balanced budget, and this will be very difficult as the funds we have available are so much less than 10 years ago that this, is, that this has made it worse, and by the increasing costs, we're all, we're all dreading at the moment. In many ways, the same applies to our communities. Wages have been stagnating for a decade, while prices, especially of essentials like fuel and food, are skyrocketing. More and more people will need some help and our services while we have to cut our spending to set a balanced budget. 2023 will be a year of the very tough decisions from public service households and budgets. I call on the government to put aside ideology, internal squabbles, refocus themselves on the job of running the country in a way that ensures no one goes cold or hungry this winter. Finally, I'd like to thank all public servants, community volunteers who work over Christmas and who keep people safe, well, and to all our elected members and officers who have worked hard all year round. I would like to give a special mention and thanks to Cathy Rowe, uh, who has been a Director of Finance for the Council and for the CCG, and whose last meeting this will be, as she is now taking up a full-time full basis, uh, a role she's taking up on a full-time basis after Christmas, her role as Deputy Chief Finance Officer for the NHS, and I'm proud that she's been able to do that. Kathy has been a good friend to this authority and I hope she will continue to be in her new role. We wish her well and all the best for the coming year. I would also like to wish everyone health, wealth and happiness for 2023. Councillor Fairfowl. Thanks, thanks, Chair. Um, and just uh, an update on the, um, the leader's announcement there. Um, I think um, what, what, we, what we show as Tameside, I think when we come together, I think we can make a difference. And that's, that's across all parties. And I just want to say thank you to every member in this room, every officer that's actually donated to this, this Amazon wish list for our, for our young people in, in, who, who are in the care system. The response has been absolutely fantastic. It actually closes tonight because we've now got the big job of actually distributing these, these gifts to our care for our children. And I just want to say, put on record, I, I, I just say again, a massive thank you. It really is appreciated from the service. And I just want to wish you all a happy Christmas. You have made a difference. Thank you. Thank you. It's the end of the announcement. So now move on to agenda item five. Council's uh, big conversation. There, there are no questions under this item. Agenda item six is the meetings of the Cabinet on the 23rd of sorry, October and 23rd of November. Those moved. Seconded. Second, Thank you. Councillor Carty. See what I'm doing. Right, thank you, Chair. And can I say at the moment, thank you, Councillor North, particularly, and your team for getting to grips with the budget. I know it's been really difficult and uh, you worked very hard with Cathy and so on. And uh, it's, it's really quite frightening, actually, though, when you, when you read it and go through it, because it's that sentence on page 12 that says, with no indication of any additional funding will be provided either in 22 or 23 or for the next two financial years. As the leader just alluded to, it's going to be unbearably tough, I think, as we're going along, with no additional funding to be received. But of course now, with the relief, we're going to be allowed, allowed to raise our council tax, tax from some of the poorest people in the northwest of England, who are already struggling with this Tory, Tory government crashing the economy, following the 12 pointless years of austerity. Austerity, as we know, is a hateful class-driven punishment inflicted on the majority of the population of the UK and proven to, have the uh, proven to be totally ineffectual in improving the state of the country's budgets. But local government and the services so needed by our people have been decimated and we must expect two more years. We're beyond savings. The fat has been cut off. The safety nets removed, 
and the services are now being amputated. We as a nation cannot even house our population. No one on average wage now would be eligible to fund a mortgage to buy a property. Rents are extortionate and woe betide you if you ask your landlord to make a repair. You'll be out on a no-fault eviction before you know where you are. We have more food banks in the UK, as we all know, than McDonald's outlets. And now, as the donors, the people who give to the food banks, suffer from the government-inflicted cost of living crisis, the pantries and the food banks are having to limit what they can supply to the needy. Those needy who are often working full-time, but not earning enough to feed themselves or their families. So let's look at some of the four, some of the things that the four Tory PMs and six chancellors have looked after and who are there to look after our money. There's the obvious stuff, 120 million so far on the Rwanda nonsense, not one flight taken off, a policy so ludicrous it could not get through the British courts, let alone the international ones. The legal bill is enormous, but they don't care because it's not their money, it's our money. There's another one, 34 million in profits to Serco, you know, the company that's owned by the Churchills and the Soames family. 34 million in profits, a project for the disgraced track and trace project, a project so useless that the average phone operator employed by them took three calls a fortnight. Despite being told by the government and pressed to say to improve it, they say, well, they don't really care because it's not theirs, it's ours. It's not their money, it's our money. There's a good one. As admitted in Tory leadership hustings, any of you watch that, Suella asked Rushi, Rushdi, Rushi, whatever his name is, how can you justify the 17 billion already written off in fraudulent COVID loans? Lo loans handed out so irresponsibly the applicants never even had to supply a letter-headed newspaper, headed, headed boat paper, let alone a bank statement. He couldn't answer because it's not his money, it's our money. And then there was the PPE, ordered via the, B, the VIP list. It's about two years. Councillor Dickinson, it's up to me to chair the meeting and not yourself. And, and as one of your members, interrupted the mayor to make a political statement among civic announcements, particularly about the death of Janet and of Margaret, and who wouldn't shut up, you didn't ask him to sit down, I'm asking Councillor Carty to carry on. And it's under finance on the Executive Cabinet minutes. Thank you, Chair. Uh then there was all that PPE ordered by the VIP list. We've been talking about that today. It's been on the news, of course, with Baroness Moan. But what about the companies set up by Hancock and his stable owning sister, or his local landlord and good friend? No experience in procurement needed. Total bill, 11 billion for the PPE, including their profits. How can that be? Because it's not, it's not their money, it's our money. And when this PPE arrived, I don't know if it was what Hancock had sourced, that much of the stuff from China was already used, full of blood or worse, or the consignment so long awaited from coming from Turkey. Remember the containers arriving at the docks? Infested with insects and totally inadequate for the job, but promptly paid for. Why? Because it's not the government's money, it's our money, and they don't give a hoot. As a Brucey bonus on that one, by the way, all that contaminated useless PPE is in storage. It's too toxic to destroy by burning or any other way. It's costing 3.3 million a week to store it. But they don't care because they're Tories and it's not their money, it's our money. And then there's Rishi's eat out to help out. The only thing it helped was the COVID virus and there were cases of infection, if you remember, going through the roof. Two minutes, Councillor Carter. Okay, as the restaurateurs crammed staff that pocketed the lion's share of the 15 million quid paid out. But they don't care because it's not their money. So the people who investigated and introduced the frauds of all these people don't give a nonsense. They have a private medical insurance, send their children to private schools. Rishi's one daughter 
£41,000 annual fees. He gets £17,000 tax refund on, that, on, that, on those fees. They pay legalised crooks to ensure they pay little or no tax. Stash it abroad or just become non-doms. So at the last estimate, money spent by the government unwisely, frauds not chased, money's not collected, came to £70 billion. £70 billion. Pounds. What could the local authorities all, of all colours have done with that this year? I think we'd have cleared the A&Es for a start and, and, say, and, and got people out of hospitals. And we might even have managed to repair the town hall. But they're not going to do that because it's their money. Thank you, Councillor Carty. Your time's up. And Thank you, Councillor Dickinson. Ruined. Thank you. broadcast and I don't accept that it's part of these minutes and I know it's finance but the people in this borough are absolutely sick of this council talking about national things they can do nothing about and not looking after the borough. Executive Cabinet 23rd of November item 84 Staley Bridge bus station study. I dread to think how much money has been wasted on consultants fees over the years about Staley Bridge town centre in the west end. I know of four that cost anything up to 75,000 that are all on the shelf somewhere, gathering dust, and here we have another one. I read that TFGM gave Tameside Council 100,000 for the study of the bus station. Well, all they had to do was look at previous brochures and plans, and they didn't need the study. There are 19 options and four concepts in the study, an awful lot of words saying very little, and what it does say we knew anyway. For example, the haulage company, Roy Oldham, as head of pensions, tried for many years to find a suitable site for them to move to and never found one. And the study states, preferred option 2.14. The shortlist identified has, been, has then been appraised further based on stakeholder acceptability, land ownership impact, forecast timescales for implementation and town centre-wide impact. This process identified option 12, new bus stops at key locations in the town centre, including by station, and redevelop existing bus stations as the highest scoring option. And therefore, this has been identified as the recommended preferred option. The recommendation put to the exec cabinet and this council is very similar, goes all around the houses without actually saying what the preferred option was, which in plain English is, we have 19 options, the majority are unaffordable, so we are recommending option 12, renewing the bus stops and reviewing existing bus station. Which I don't object to. What I do object to is the amount of money spent on a 46-page glossy brochure written in officer language to tell us something that most Staley Bridge councillors already knew. And not once in this study does it mention consultation with commuters and passengers. I would have thought their input would have been invaluable. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Colburn. Uh, uh, with regards to the exact minutes, item 83, Tameside and Stockport Partnership Review. Since the shared system was introduced, Ofsted has inspected Tameside services for children with special educational needs and disabilities and found significant areas of weakness. Also, statistics were showing that pupils were underperforming in the borough. The Conservative group welcome a Director of Education who is solely committed to the improvement opportunities, performance and outcomes for the children of Tameside and for Tameside Council. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor North. Thank you, Councillor Carty. I mean, the figures are actually mind-boggling, aren't they? Um, you said you're fed up of the Council talking about national issues. But those national issues have a direct impact on us. So, for example, because of inflation, our salary bill has gone up by 3.5 million. Our energy bill has gone up by 3.2 million. And we have to deal with all those within a budget, which we know next year will actually be cut because it won't reflect the inflation that we're expecting next year. Um, just to add to something, to give people some reassurance on... Um, around the family hubs and just uh, best start for life, I just want to reassure people that we will again this Christmas be providing supermarket vouchers 
for children receiving a benefits related free school meal as part of the household support fund. The vouchers are £36 per child for the school holidays. Um, they will also be available for eligible two and three year olds. And alongside this, we are also continuing the free healthy activities and food for children, some of whom are our most vulnerable children through the whole of the holiday activity programme. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Anyone else before I bring the executive leader back in? No, Councillor Cooney. Well done, um, Councillor Carter. Spot on. Um, on Councillor Dickinson and Councillor Colburn, um, and also slightly on, on Councillor North's response. Uh, and, and I've got to say, she's doing a tremendous job. And it is a time of year, as I've said in my points, and Councillor Fairfowl about looked after children. But more importantly, what Councillor North is putting the point over is that we, we are in really tough times. And any help, any help in hand, is really welcome. And I think that, to be fair to Councillor North, the work that she's been doing in that area is exceptional. Congratulations. And I do, I do know that people throughout this period and after Christmas, when there's a new, a new level of coming in in April or whatever, you know, will be helped by what we're doing. I'll get to Councillor Dickinson's, well, I'm not going to disagree, I think. I've always wondered why you've got the biggest bus station in Staley Bridge. It's bigger than Piccadilly. And um, so, <laughs> so I do think, it, look, you know, to me, let's get it moving. And, and that, that's what I say. I think to the Staley Bridge members, they're frustrated as anyone else. And we have to go through all sorts of procurements and processes and brochures and everything else. You know, at the end of the day, let's get it moving because there's a space there that's underused and actually bring it back as a, a, as a working space within the town centre and realise that even Piccadilly Gardens now doesn't have that big bus station. So, and I think that the people in Staley Bridge welcome the service, the buses, they've always got a problem with that, but actually could it be managed a little bit better? And I think um, I, I would echo what you're saying and I think every single Staley Bridge councillor, so I've got no problem with that. And if, but there is a frustration. Our oh, councillor uh, Colburn's one, uh, yes, I, I believe and we did as a group, certainly in the cabinet as well, that um, the, director of fire, the director of children's education needs to be just one job, and that's done here. And um, I, I do know that Tim is, is going some to stop, but that's, you know, well done to that. But what I would say is that I want a director full-time here, and we would welcome Tim carrying on doing that. And if someone doesn't want to do that, but we won't be compromising on that. The education of the children to us is important. And that's why we're saying it's a director full time. Thank you. All in favour of receiving those minutes? Thank you. We'll move on then to agenda item seven. Meeting of the Standards Committee held on the 1st of November. Councillor Rick. Move to the second did. Yeah. Any questions or comments, Councillor Wellington? Thank you, Chair. And before I start, I have been made aware that when I was speaking before, the feed was cut off, like as if we're in some sort of communist China chamber. Uh, you know, I don't know who cuts these feeds off, but you know, we've got the big green curtain there. We always used to say behind the iron curtain. Well, in Thameside, there's someone behind that curtain who controls that feed. So it's like whatever goes on behind the green curtain stays behind the green curtain. No one from Tameside should know. So I'm just going to go on to those minutes and hopefully I won't be interrupted this time or stopped. Uh, but I just wanted to discuss the matter of standards. Uh, the group will obviously support in banning sex offenders from standing for council. I do, however, have to ask how this will be enforced because Early this year, I reported that Councillor Oliver Ryan was ineligible to stand due to his employment at Oldham Council as a political researcher for the Oldham Labour Group, confirmed in an email from Oldham's Borough Solicitor. Under the Local Government Officers Political Restrictions Regulations 1990, it states that those in politically restricted posts are not eligible to stand for election. I reported this to the returning officer the police and indeed the Electoral Commission. 
prior to the close of nominations as making a false statement in regards to eligibility is a criminal offence. Both the police and the electoral commission did not bother to reply. No surprises there. But I did receive a reply from uh, the council stating it wasn't their responsibility to investigate the eligibility of candidates. So whilst the aim is a worthwhile endeavour, I have to ask how this will be enforced, otherwise this will just be a waste of council time. But whilst we're on standards, I would like to make a few points. I'd like some clarification from the Cabinet Member for Inclusive Growth, Business and Employment. His post essentially oversees the Growth Department, which is responsible for things like land sales and planning. Councillor Sweeten declares on his interests that he is the Chair of Works for You Advisory Board, a company that has received over £1.3 million in the last year from this council. Works for You started off as a company providing educational services to troubled children. They seem to have broadened their remit recently, looking at taking over various council assets, such as the stables at Cheatham's Park or the changing rooms at Edgemont Street, to which Works for You director Norman Mack admits will run as a commercial venture. Now, I have no issue with people putting underutilised council assets to good use, but Councillor Sweeten joined Mr Mackey at Mosley Town Council to support and recommend the planning application. Now, I have to ask, is it a conflict of interest where you have a cabinet member who has the fingers involved with planning and land sales to be chair of a commercial business that is buying assets from this council and then actively lobbying planning committees to approve their plans? I just feel it looks a little murky and I think the public have a right to know. And I think they have a right to know if the land was purchased at or leased at a commercial rate. I also feel that as councillors, we shouldn't be favouring one business or application over another. Um, I, I did have other things to say, but I know that Councillor Cooney um, said earlier that Councillor Jackson had resigned due to personal issues. Um, but I think most of us will be aware that that is down to the allegations of bullying, which I referenced Chair, earlier. Thank you. That is totally out of order, Councillor Billington, and it's Councillor North that's responsible for land sales, not Councillor Sweeten. So you might like to get your facts right the next time. No. A statement about me. I would like to come back to that. No, I said. All right then. Put it in writing. That's all. You wrote to the Electoral Commission, they give you an answer or didn't respond, I accept that. You wrote to the police, and they either give you an answer and didn't respond. Anything, anything that any member feels isn't right, there is a monitoring officer, put it in writing, and the matter will be dealt with appropriately. So there's no cover ups or anything whatsoever. And I make that clear, uh, I have every faith in every single councillor in the, in this, on this council. So what I would say is anyone has any issues about whatsoever, then put it in writing to the proper place. To try and do it here is just showboating, Councillor Billington. That's all. Any other questions or comments on this? Yep. Thanks, Chair. It's just uh, to clarify something on the Edmont Street project. Um, oh, Councillor Holmer, can you stand up, please, while you speak? Yep. Sorry. Thank you. It's just a, uh, a point of clarification on the Egmont Street project. Uh, Councillor Sweeten and Mr Mackey were invited by the Town Council to come and introduce themselves and give us a bit of background on what their organisation... It was, it was more for the people of the town to give us the information on what their organisation... Councillor Holmer, offer. that's not for this meeting, thank you. I'm just... It's thank just, you. I'm sorry, but Not Mr. Billington there has made it sound Thank seedy you. and That's underhand, Thank and you. there is nothing underhand. Thank you. Any other questions or comments on these? If not, they've been moved and seconded. All those in favour? Thank you. We'll now move on to agenda item eight, which is the overview panel. Those moved? Thank you. They seconded. Thank you. Any questions or comments on them? No? All in favour? Yeah. Thank you. 
We now move on to agenda item nine, which is a democratic process working group. Was moved. I'm, I'm led to believe that the issues that were raised at the meeting have now been resolved again. But if anyone still wants to tweak anything, have a discussion. But we are moving these as it is now. But if anyone wants to have a discussion, then please be quickly with, with Robert. But the minutes are now. I'm, I believe the issues that were raised there have all been resolved with the Staley Bridge members um, and such, and also the ducking field ones that were raised. But I also like to say, I know it's in there, disappointed that the issue about I voted ID when you're going to a polling station is still outstanding. Thank you. Will they second it? Any questions or comments? Councillor Billington. Um, so I'd like to comment on the progress of neighbourhood forums. I'm happy that the leader contacted uh, council members uh, of the working group last week to request a date where we can all meet to discuss uh, the new format of what will hopefully be a meaningful, meaningful uh, return to district assemblies. I'd like to state on record what a farce the last neighbourhood forum was. This was the first meeting since March. At the last full council, I questioned if it was a worthwhile use of taxpayers' money to pay special responsibility allowances to the chairs and deputies for a committee that had yet to meet this democratic year. The leader of the council stated that the October meeting would go ahead. However, shortly after full council, members received cancellation emails saying that the meeting had been postponed. We were given a date later on for November. Members have busy schedules and quite often meetings with residents and community organisations could be booked weeks or sometimes months in advance. That's why there was a number of apologies on, uh, for those meetings. I think it is important that when we set a calendar for the democratic year, uh, we stick to it. I questioned this and had a reply from the chief executive who replied saying that a meeting would be held in November so an appropriate agenda could be published. Given the fact it had been over six months since the last meeting, you would have thought there would have been ample time for this. So when we did have the meeting, imagine my surprise to see that the agenda was essentially a cut and paste job across the borough. Why was it relevant to members in Staley Bridge, Hyde, Drawsden, Denton, Duckingfield, Mosley, Ordenshaw and Longdendale to discuss Councilor the Billington. progress of the um, regeneration of the Town Centre? Yes. This has nothing to do with this agenda, Democratic Process Working Group. Democratic it is not on it, and I'm moving on. Uh, overviewing Enough. the new neighbourhood forums. Thank you. So, do you want Enough. to hear it out or not? Or no, I do not. Feed again? No. Okay. You may sit down. I'm moving on. Is this democracy? It isn't democracy when you interrupt things. I'm I'm yes, you do. Now, I asked you, I'll ask you to sit down, please, and allow this meeting to carry on. So, do you mind sitting down and we'll move on? No. No. Thank you. Right. I'm moving on. Any other questions or comments? on the Democratic Process Working Group. No? Do you wish to respond? To, as you said, there is a place to ask that question, Councillor Billington. It wasn't on these minutes, mm -hmm. um, you know, in that sense. But I would do uh, just a point. I want to thank all the chairs of these area meetings for being the corporate parents and attending their meetings as well, besides the other roles that they've got. So, but I won't, as he said, it wasn't on the agenda. It isn't an item for here. If it is an item, then Councillor Billington can know, knows where it can be raised. Thank you. So all those in favour of that? Yeah, thank you. Now move on to agenda item 10, enforcement panel terms of reference. All those moved? It's what move. Yeah, thank you. Are they seconded? Yeah. Thank you. Any questions or comments on them? No? You're all in favour? Thank you. We'll move on then to agenda item 11. That's the amendment to the constitution relating to strategic capital planning and monitoring group. Councillor Cooney to move. Move that at the moment. Thank you. I'll second it. Second those, Chair. Yeah. Thank you. Any questions or comments on these? Councillor Colburn. Thank you, Chair. Um, 
At the last full council meeting, uh, we were told that the speaker's panel for planning uh, would hear the application for Godly Green Garden Village on the 21st of December. Um, there isn't a calendar date on the council website for this, and I've had quite a few residents a bit concerned about this. Um, I have spoken to uh, the leader about this a couple of weeks ago, who told me it is going ahead, but it's just not on the website. Um, has a venue and a time been confirmed, please? Thank you. <coughs> Thank you for that. On the 21st, I couldn't give you the time of that, but it, I should imagine whenever planning normally meets, but they, they will give the, the appropriate legal notice and everything else. But everyone is aware the 21st is the day that it'll be on. We are going through how that's going to be set up, yeah. To me, it should just be a normal planning meeting. Okay. Any others? You all happy with that then? Okay. Just before we go on to agenda item 12, let's ask this. Ms. Stewart to move. Agenda item 12 is a meeting of the Head of Paid Service Appointment Panel, Councillor Cooney. Andrew Stewart, as Chief Executive, on a permanent basis, be approved, Chair. Thank you. Is that seconded? Second, Chair. Any questions or comments? No, everybody okay with that? Thank you. And I move on to agenda item. 13 questions. Sorry. Oh, yes. Might help. We got you already then for a few minutes um all, all i want to say is uh, members and officers of the council uh, that's, that's the wrong one there isn't it <laughs> i've got that many here there you are item 12 there right anyway i'm very pleased there was a unanimous support for sandra stewart to be appointed as chief executive in the time i've known sandra since she started here in 1994 she's been an excellent officer during the 28 years she has served the council working her way up from trainee solicitor to be the youngest borough solicitor in the country to deputy chief executive in 2010 and in 2016, 2016 taking on the responsibility of managing the council's pension fund which is the largest LGPS pension fund in the UK and which has virtually doubled in value to 30 billion under her leadership and in 20, 2019 being recognised by the Municipal Journal for the first Director of the Year Award. The Council is facing an unprecedented financial situation caused by the post-pandemic recovery, the cost of living crisis and the spiralling, spiralling energy costs, which are affecting businesses and residents across the borough, including the Council and its staff. So I'm pleased that we will be at We'll, that we will all be working in partnership with Sandra to get through this as she shares our vision to make a difference for the people of Tameside. Congratulations, Sandra. Thank you. Agenda item 13 is questions. I've received no questions under this item. Agenda item 14, urgent items. I haven't got any urgent items this evening. Could I ask all uh, members to rise while the civic mayor and his party leaves the chamber?